Welcome to Beautiful Day Un Dia Bonito. I'm your host, Giselle Figueroa, and I am here with Dr. Virgis from St. Luke's Center of Urology. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm super happy to have you. So can you tell the audience about your background? Sure. So I was born in San Antonio, Texas. My dad was in the Air Force at that time. Um, so they were always training. They were both in their residency. My dad's a urologist. My mom's a psychiatrist. So they would drop me off with a woman from Mexico who looked after me at that time. So grew up speaking Spanish there. Um, we then moved to North Carolina where I grew up the rest of the time. Our family is, uh, we're Cajuns. And we're also, so we have some roots that are from France, some roots from Spain. Also oh, you're some, like a little mutt. We are like a little mix. Yeah, <laughs> we have some Jewish roots as well. So sort of a mix, but very much grew up in the Cajun culture, eating, drinking, enjoying, you know, sort the of the fun stuff. The fun stuff in life. That's right. Good. So what are some of your fondest memories growing up in the Spanish household? I hear you, you speak, hablas un poco español, ¿no? Sí, hablo un poquito de español. Okay. Prefiero español al inglés. Um, so my parents didn't speak Spanish to me growing up. Apparently I would speak to them. I would say, más leche, por favor, and ask them for <laughs> things in Spanish. Uh, so I kind of forgot it growing up and then started studying it again uh, in school. But I always liked that. You know, a lot of the Cajun culture, there was a lot of cultural mixing. So emphasis on food, uh, rich dishes, music, things like that. So a lot of crossover between, you know, Latino, Hispanic culture sure. and Cajun culture growing up. So, do you know how to dance Spanish music? Or are you are you a fake Spanish? No, I wouldn't say I'm fake. Uh, I do love dancing. <laughs> I'm not very good at like merengue or anything like that oh, or I'm salsa. I do appreciate it, but I don't know how to dance those specific dances. But I will move if you put some music on. There's no keeping. It's me like you still. can't, right? Exactly. So, what are some of your favorite Latin dishes? Um, as you can see, por mi panza aquí, me gusta comer. Um, so anything really. When I, was, no, <laughs> when I was studying abroad in Spain, I always liked the dishes there. Good paella was good. So good. Here, of course, tacos, um, uh, ropa vieja. I was in Miami and I went to try the Miami um, hamburgers there, las fritas. Amazing. So anything uh, I'm down to. You're a doctor. To. You should not be eating. Well, that everything, as cholesterol? I tell my patients, everything in moderation, including moderation. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you like dulce de leche? Dulce de leche me encanta, sí. Oh, good answer. Menos sí. Café cubano, todo eso. Oh. So as a urologist, what are some of the common symptoms you see coming from the Latin community? Well, of course, we're going to see the normal complaints uh, in any community, but specifically in our Spanish-speaking patients that come to see me, a few concerns, some about erectile dysfunction, some about uh, what we call LUTs, or lower urinary tract symptoms. These are things such as burning with urination, frequency, slow stream, things like that. A lot of our Hispanic patients also have just general concerns about men's health and how to stay healthy. So these are things that we see quite commonly on our Spanish-speaking patients. In addition, to the normal urologic complaints of kidney stones, leakage, etc. It must be our diet, right? That rich diet. It, it can be. So to avoid some of these symptoms, avoiding bladder irritants, which are unfortunately the fun things to eat. So spicy food, acidic food, uh, alcohol. If That's you're taking all we some, eat. Exactly. So moderation of these things can help with your symptoms. Um, additionally, in terms of sexual health and men's health, just keeping a, a healthy body weight. We sure. do see that being an issue in some of our Hispanic patients. They're walking around with a, an elevated body mass index or BMI. So we do always talk to them about a healthier diet, incorporating exercise where... Uh, uh, where applicable. Oh, exercise, you said that word. What are some steps we can do to keep these symptoms at bay or like we just touched on Again, it, yeah, so yeah. sort of general uh, avoidance of things that uh, kind of like what your grandmother always said, right? So brush your teeth, eat fruits and vegetables, inc incorporating lean proteins and healthier foods, staying hydrated and avoiding things like smoking, things of okay. that nature. What inspired you to get into medicine, specifically urology? My uh, father was always into sort of science and things growing up. His father was a chemical engineer. Unfortunately, his father smoked a lot. So when my dad was in college, he found out my, that his dad had bladder cancer, ended up dying of bladder cancer, complications from surgery for that. That led my dad into urology. Um, when we were growing up, that was before privacy laws, so you could just bring your kids to work. So I would round with him at the hospital. I would play with catheters and broken cystoscopes, so which are fun. cameras you can put inside of a bladder. So I kind of grew, grew up with it. Um, I liked orthopedics a lot when I was in medical school, but then rotated on it, and I really didn't like it. So I was kind of said, what am I going to do? I've heard some things. Yeah, yeah, I then rotated on urology, and I really loved it. And uh, it's a great field. We work with interesting anatomy, the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder. Uh, and we also do a lot of clinical medicine, too. So we're seeing patients kind of talking like we are in the clinic, helping them figure out what they need. But we also have some surgeries we can do uh, to help them out as well. What would you say sets St. Luke's aside from all the other 
Yeah, so I, I interviewed widely when I was looking for jobs. I, uh, I trained in Brooklyn in, in urology residency. I then did a fellowship in robotic cancer surgery at Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. And I was looking at some hospital systems in New York, kind of all over. But what I really liked about St. Luke's was just how it's run. So uh, excellent facilities, state-of-the-art care, and really just nice people. I think we do a very good job yeah. here of just talking to our patients as you know fellow human beings and finding out what they need and sort of removing a lot of the pretentious nature of some of the care you find at other medical centers. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I, uh, I worked for St. Luke's for a little bit. Oh, is that um, right? Yes. Yeah, so I know how you guys, you guys are more of like a family, right? It's not Agreed. like that like doctor relationship. It's almost like talking to somebody and being comfortable with being able to speak to you as if. That's certainly what we strive for. And in our practice of urology at the St. Luke Center for Urology, we have three physicians that are, are pretty good Spanish speakers. So we, we offer that to our patients as well, because it is nice to have somebody that can speak sure, your language. For those of our providers who do not, we always use our interpreter line, which is actually quite good as well in terms of making sure we're getting all the information is and the full story. the blue phone? Is that what it's called? The blue phone. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, very common. Luckily, I do, I do not use that with patients. But for those of us who don't speak Spanish, we do always right. make sure to use that with our Spanish speaking patients. How can people learn more about your practice? I think St. Luke's does a very good job in terms of our online resources, so patients can go to sluhn.org. That's our website. The cool thing there is you can read about the practice, what services we offer. You can also look up your doctor. That's how I found my own doctor. You can look through their profile, kind of find out who they are, what they're into. I sometimes forget that it's on there. Patients will come in and ask about my dad being in the military or like me playing with dinosaurs as a kid. Oh, and that's all, all that it's all on there. Yeah. So you can kind of look through and see, does this person, you know, not only them being a doctor, do I sure. think that I would like them or get along with them? And there's some video resources on there as well. So uh, that's a very good way for patients to learn more about what we offer and who we are. Thank you so much for being on our show. Hopefully I won't have to come see you one day, but if I do, it will be for Salsa Dancing. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. Thank you so much for um, supporting the show. We love you guys, um, and thank you so much. Absolutely. Hopefully we'll have you back. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us on Beautiful Day Un Dia Bonito. Stay tuned for more fun. Welcome to Beautiful Day Un Dia Bonito show presented by Wells Fargo. I'm your host, Giselle Figueroa, and I am here with Emilio from Emilio's Restaurant in the Stroud Mall. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I want to say thank you for coming. I really thank you for, for the food. I'm more excited for the food than you. <laughs> so can you tell our viewers a little bit about your background? Well, I come from Guatemala. I came to the United States in 1981. I was only 14 years old. My mother and mom, they, my dad passed away two years ago. Uh, my mother's still alive. She's in New York. She's 94. And I became a father. I uh, got married, and I got three kids, 28, 27, and 25, two boys and a girl. And now I own two restaurants. Congratulations. Thank you. What are some of your favorite Latin traditions? I love Christmas. Noche Buena. Noche Buena. Oh, the best. And I love Año Nuevo. Año Nuevo, yeah. You know, Latin American countries, they really... Año Nuevo is New Year's for yeah. anyone that... And Latin America, we really celebrate those two days. We sure do. We do. And I love uh, Easter. What drew you into the restaurant business? Well, uh, survival. And I, I, I am a pastor of a church. Uh, we had the church on Main Street, and then we moved the church into the mall. And the church in the mall is, is growing faster. So I'm only a part-time pastor in the church, so they needed me there more time. And so the mall manager asked me, you know, what, what's taking you so long? And I said, I do Uber and Lyft to survive, to supply for my family. Sure. She told me, you, you have to be here. And then she said, let's take a walk into the food court. And she showed me an empty spot there. And she says, open up a restaurant in there. I said, I don't know how to cook. And then she says, just do it. God is going to bless you. And that's how we end up opening a restaurant. And now the Poconos are blessed. Now the Poconos are blessed. <laughs> that's yeah. so cool. That's so nice. <laughs> I like that. So what can people expect when they come to Emilio's? They can expect a family atmosphere. We really care about them. We are really about relationships, establishing relationships. And to be honest with you, we have done more ministry in the restaurant than the church because we really care about the people. Sure. And all, all ages come to us. As a matter of fact, they call me pop and they call my wife mom. Oh. And that's how close we, we are. Students from college, they, when they are, when they're down, they come 
to us for encouragement and they said to us pop mom pray for me i'm going to take a test and they come to the restaurant and they don't oh, have to buy anything so it's just a relationship that we have established with them that's awesome and then relationship we really connect people so Antojos is the Colombian restaurant that you also own. What are some of your most popular dishes at Antojos? We have La Bandeja Paisa, right here. And you have to show it to me, right? Yeah, I yeah, have to show it to you. Because it's not enough that it's in front of me. No, I have to show it. This is really <laughs> good. This is the, the most popular one. And there's another one called the Picada. I didn't have time to make it today. But it's a, it's a really popular. And we sell the, I don't know how they call it in, in, in English, is the Pargo fish. Okay. It comes with tostones and ensalada. That's the three most popular. And of course, the Colombian empanadas are the most popular ones. So now that we're, we're touching on these um, subjects of the dishes, can you share with our audience what you brought to feed this wonderful host? Okay. We have the mofongo. The mofongo is a Puerto Rican uh, dish. It's made out of a green banana. It has garlic in it. And it's, it's, it's fried and it's mush and um, then it has a little sazon in it mm. and uh, a lot of garlic. Then we have the pernil with uh, arroz con gandules, rice and beans, and we have the yuca, cassava, some people call it cassava, and we have the tostones, the fried bean, uh, banana, then uh, plantain, I'm sorry, and then we have uh, the canoa, it's, uh, it's a, it's a it's a fried yellow banana with ground meat, in, ground meat inside and mozzarella cheese and cheddar cheese. And we have the empanadas from Emilio's Place. As you notice, Emilio's Place empanada is bigger than the Colombian restaurant. Yes. It's a lot bigger. Then we have the, um, they call these alcapurrias. It's made out of uh, green banana and yuca, cassava, and it has ground meat inside. And of course we have the flan. We cannot miss the flan. Puerto you Rican cannot. people love flans and I love flan too. Me too. And so we have so vanilla, coconut, and we have cheese. And of course we're missing today the tres leches, but everything is made in the restaurant. My mouth is watering, so I have to go to the next question. <laughs> what are the hours and locations for both Emilio's and Antojo so people can come and enjoy this amazing food? Well, uh, at Emilio's place, we open from 11 to 9. Uh, from Monday through Saturday and Sundays 11 to 6. Antojos is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday and Saturday is uh, from 11 to 10. Sundays 11 to 7. Just to let you know, this yes. this food is in containers because it's a food court food. But sure. Uh, we're in the making to open up an Emilio's place too. It's going to be a sitting restaurant so our food is going to be presented just the, oh, like the Colombian food. So and we're gonna have a Spanish bakery, the Colombian bakery, in the in the restaurant when as well. When is this happening? It's in the works. So oh. we're gonna be serving breakfast as well, which uh, Antojos doesn't have, and Emilio's place too is gonna have breakfast too. I can't wait. I'm excited. Uh, I can't wait to see it happening. Congratulations on your success mm, and thank you. And the sweet bakery that's coming along also. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna gain weight too. <laughs> We'll read it together. <laughs> no judging. Um, but thank you again for coming on this show with this amazing food and congratulations on your restaurants. Thank and you. And I'm going to be making a stop there. You better. I will. But now we are going to leave and try some of this amazing food. So stay tuned. Welcome to a beautiful day on the Abonito show presented by Wells Fargo. I'm your host, Giselle Figueroa, and I'm here with the beautiful and talented DJ Ruby. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Giselle. Thank we you for having me again. We always love having you here. So for the viewers that don't know much about you, um, can you let us know a little bit about your background? Sure. I am originally from Venezuela. I came here 20 years ago, and I'm... I'm loving it here in this country. Um, Mary, I have two beautiful daughters. Beautiful. So what are some of your favorite Latin traditions that you enjoy with your family? We do a lot of things, especially in Christmas time. As a tradition, enjoying with my family, we make ajacas. What is that? <laughs> ajacas is a special dish that we cook every Christmas time. And it's it's a nice thing to do together as a family on Christmas time because we all get together. It's a special dish made out of cornmeal 
and it has three mix of kind of beef and meats. It's all wrapped with um, plantain leaf and we make it every Christmas. So we really enjoy it because you get the family together so they can do the hard work. Of course. <laughs> That's what they say. The holidays are nice, but it's a lot of hard work. You've been quite busy at House DJ at Blue Tequila, the um, area's premier Latin hotspot. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yes. Can you tell us about your stay at Blue Tequila and the exciting changes that are happening? Over a year ago, I became the house DJ at Blue Tequila. And everything is being changing a lot because the atmosphere that we're bringing to Blue Tequila is being very fun. And we also want to tell everybody that we are here representing all Latin America, all different cultures, all different countries, enjoying our music in there. So we are actually dedicated to change little by little, okay? Because it doesn't happen like of that in one, in one, two, three. And I see Good a lot of people in there. Yeah, it takes some time and to develop also uh, the audience and see what the people like, what the people like to enjoy every Saturday night because that's my, that's my performing basically in there at Blue Tequila every Saturday night. And yes, we are devoted to our residents in the Pocono area specifically because this is where we are growing up as a Latin community. We're being dedicated to do the changes because everybody wants a different atmosphere, getting more contemporary or maybe modern and you know have different feeling have like uh, like you are in another place in the city New Jersey New York you know we are in the country and it's a very few places where you can have fun with this kind of atmosphere of that today our audience is requiring this is actually my feedback and that's why we are doing some changes. What are some of the latest trends in um, DJ requests that you have received? The music. The music is very varied. Uh, performers are creating every day something to offer to our uh, audience, to you know, young people, contemporary people, and seniors, people. Everybody is involved in yeah. today's uh, music. And the music is such a beautiful language to express yourself because even if you don't speak the language, you just go there and have fun. This place is wonderful because we host a lot of parties in there and a lot of people that they are non-Spanish, they go there also and they love to have fun. They love us. They love the the Latin, the Spanish blood yes. going on and I make sure I give 100% satisfaction every single night that I perform there or anywhere else so that's why I am more dedicated to bring live entertainment live bands orchestras uh, live performers singers musicians any kind of musicians to offer a different kind of life entertainment to get out of the routine and give to our community something different. Right now we have a special events coming up uh, February 15th. For example, we have a Sony Dero night and also in March we have a bachata, live bachata band. Oh, fun. In April, we're still working on it, but May 16 is the performing of Ruby Perez. Ruby Perez is such a wonderful and internationally well-known artist. He is from the 1980s and oh 1990s, where, where he stopped on his hits, and most, most of the Latin uh, community Latin musician and people knows about him. Even though if you can't really recognize his name, 
As soon as you hear a son of him, you know, oh, oh, yeah, I know, I know that son. Because, you know, today we are contemporary yeah. and the young generation can't really know who he no, is. Right. But uh, he's a big artist, big star. He's coming here to the Poconos for the real first time. That will be And awesome he's going to be a blue tequila performing May 16th. What other upcoming events do you have? The most highlighted events that I have right now that I'm being working on it is the Stroud Fest uh, as a performer and also in conjunction with the Sherman Theater, which is going to be on the Labor Day weekend. Um, going to be there. Also in fall, September 4, I'm going to DJ on a cruise. What cruise? That I, I better be on that cruise. Yes, the cruise is going to Mexico. To the, the country? Mexico? Yes, the, to the country in Mexico, not New Mexico. Gil, Mexico. hello Gil. Yes. I hope beautiful day's going. <laughs> of course, of course, you guys are certainly invited to come over. So how do we find come. out? How do we find out about this? How do we? Well, the information. And... The information is about. Um, you go up on socaontheseas.com. Okay. And you can get more information in there. You go into uh, categories and you go into the uh, Latin edition, going to Mexico, and you will see my name on it, DJ Ruby. And then you click on that and then you register and then you proceed with the registration for reservation or purchase right away. We're going to Costa Maya, Cozumel, and oh my God, it's going to be fun. And me DJing on that cruise, I think Royal Caribbean. How can people learn more about DJ Ruby? Very easy. I got my executive manager, Gil Coronado, under silamanagement.com. That's where people can find more about DJ Ruby to do the bookings right there. And then in social media, you guys can find me on Instagram under DJ Da Ruby, R U B Y. Also Facebook, don't forget, Facebook, DJ Ruby. And also Twitter, DJ Ruby. Well, it was a pleasure having you. Um, hopefully, I'll be joining you on that cruise. Right? <laughs> yes, you. You gotta come, did you say? You gotta I come. I know I do. Yeah, you gotta come. So people right there, please start making some phone calls to Beautiful Day because you wanna see the host yes, I of have. Giselle Figaro of Beautiful Day on Dia Bonito and that cruise. Oh, she's my advocate, yes. We all want to be there. I love her. She cannot miss <laughs> that cruise. I love you more. Um, <laughs> love you too. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for being our DJ for a beautiful day, um, sure. for our events. You're absolutely amazing. You rock. You're a rock star. <laughs> Um, and we love you. Oh, I love you too. Thank you for having oh, me. Also, thank you. thank you for the production, the team of Absolutely. Beautiful Day. I am very happy to go up with you guys. You are, you guys are amazing behind cameras right there. I love you. You guys are the best. Thank you for having me one more time. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Beautiful Day on the Abonito Show.